Hey everybody, it's Ashley and welcome back to the City Stead Kitchen. I am working on a compilation of broccoli recipes for you to show you a wide range of recipes that you can use to get more broccoli into your diet. Whether you use fresh broccoli or frozen broccoli, they all sort of have a different place. They can a lot of times it can be used interchangeably. So what I'm gonna do is similar to the sweet potato video that I did, which I can link if you wanna get more sweet potatoes in your diet and you're looking for just different ways or more information on the nutritional value and things like that, I'll link it. But this one's gonna be all about broccoli. We all know that broccoli is so, so, so healthy for us and there's so many great vitamins and nutrients that broccoli has, but getting it actually into our meals, getting our kids to eat it, getting ourselves to eat it sometimes can be a challenge. Maybe you don't have an issue with that. Maybe you just love it in every way and it's super simple. Um, but I don't know that that's always the case for our family. So I thought maybe it would be the case for other people's family too. And one of the things that I'm really trying to do here on this channel is to focus on healthy eating and how we can get cooking at home more because that just like eating broccoli is universally better for us in a lot of different ways. Sometimes just the process of making food can be really therapeutic and a way of showing love and the nutrition too, comes back to nutrition. So what I'm doing right now actually is making a little bit of lunch and I'm making macaroni and cheese. But what I do is I usually ask my kids if they want spinach or broccoli in their macaroni and cheese and I just don't even give them any other options and they, uh, usually hands down prefer broccoli. When I do it with spinach, I actually prepare it a little differently, but for the broccoli, I'm gonna show you how I do it. I just have my biggest kettle here, half full of water, it's already on. I did put a little salt in there, you don't have to do that. I have three boxes of macaroni and cheese, and then one big bag of broccoli. I probably will use three quarters of this, and then, one thing that I really like to do, because I think that it makes it tastier and just a little bit easier for, especially the kids who are expecting like a just macaroni and cheese plain, or they really like it super cheesy. This is great. What I do is I actually use four packets. So I buy a fourth box or have a fourth box and I just use the cheese packet. So it kind of helps to compensate for the extra bulk in there from the broccoli. So it makes it nice and cheesy and it's great. The other thing that I do is I chop this up. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do right now is get this chopped up while my water's boiling and it just makes it smaller. So I think bite-sized pieces, this is frozen, so it works really well in this recipe because I just put it straight in my pot with the actual dry noodles. And then by the time the noodles are done cooking, the, the broccoli is done and really the only thing extra that I did was use an extra packet and chop the broccoli. Everything else, it just mixes right in. Enough. A good sharp knife is usually enough to work through the frozen broccoli, but if you didn't want to work with frozen broccoli, you could just microwave it for a little bit or just let it sit out for a little bit before you prepare it and it should soften right up. You know, I'm just kind of chopping down the stem and then I chop the floweret into something smaller. Today I'm making a broccoli quiche, so I thought I would take you along in this broccoli theme we have going. I'm actually gonna do broccoli spinach, and I'm gonna make a huge one because we have a big family. You can normally use just a regular pie pan, but I'm gonna use a nine by 13, but I'm still gonna make it a quiche. So it's gonna be a little less traditional, but it'll be just fine, it'll be big, and any leftovers, of course, will get eaten as well. This is a great way to get lots of green veggies in and they just soften. They are mixed with nice and creamy cheese and eggs and milk and things like that. So I'm gonna pull you down here. I'm just gonna be chopping up this onion. I also just went ahead and chopped some garlic and put that in my pan with a little olive oil and butter. I always like doing a combination of those two whenever I'm doing something 
And so I'm just gonna get this broccoli chopped up and then we will get this in the pan as well. And we'll just give this a little saute and it softens things up a little bit and gets it ready for the oven. The oven is preheated already. It's at 350 degrees. You could put it a little hotter if you wanted it to cook a little quicker. You could go up to 375, but I probably wouldn't go beyond that. You don't want the, the top to darken too much before the inside is all cooked. About two cups of broccoli per quiche, I would say. Because this one's big, like I said, I'm adding spinach as well. I'm just going to add a little bit more broccoli because even though I have spinach, it's not gonna be two cups of spinach. So I'm just gonna do this real small. Because this is going into a quiche and we're not eating like whole broccoli, I am cutting these quite small. I want them to be small. That's first personal preference. So you could leave them large. I just like them small. Then they just mix throughout a lot easier. I'm gonna get the pan onto a medium high heat. So we're just gonna go ahead and let this get start sauteing while we make our crust. We got some sauteing going already. Like I said, I put that on a medium high heat. It's about a six out of 10. So I went ahead and put my spinach in and added a little bit more butter just because of the added bulk and vegetables. And I'm gonna cover this just so it's not quite so loud and it'll kind of help to steam the vegetables. The, the broth of the Spinach was actually frozen, so that's gonna need to cook. And it kind of cooled things down a little bit. I am getting the crust ready. We're just going with two cups of flour, a little bit of salt. I'm doing a double batch just because the pan is so large, so I'm gonna do a full stick of butter. But if you were just doing a regular pie pan, you could, you could get away with just doing um, half this. Just gonna cut it up into small pieces and then use my hands to incorporate it. Now it is lunchtime, but we have often had this for dinner. It could be good for breakfast or brunch. It's great to make these ahead for holidays, any kind of egg bake. Um, and frittatas are really similar to quiches. They just don't have the crust basically. And there's some just some slightly different things that you can do to save on dishes and time and stuff like that. I'm just gonna get that salt mixed in, dump the butter in. For our lunch, this is gonna be fantastic. And I have to be honest, I was not planning on making this for lunch, but I was working on a project and I was writing up a recipe for broccoli quiche and bro or broccoli frittata and I was just like, I, I want that now. <laughs> so here we're making it. If you have been around here for a little while, you may have seen on some of my videos, I talk about these meal planning food guides that I've made for you and have them uh, available on the website. So I'm just incorporating this butter with my fingers and kind of just squeezing it in. It was cold directly out of the fridge when I put it in here. But these meal planning guides are a resource for you to be able to meal plan more. And a lot of times, Recipes can be kind of all over the place. And so I thought it would be a good idea to really narrow in and focus on single ingredients. And so the meal planning guides are broken out by ingredient. And of course, so many ingredients when you're cooking, they're versatile. They're versatile. You can um, use substitutions, you can add things, you can take things away if you don't like them. There's so much flexibility when it comes to cooking and cooking at home is one of the things that I really want to help other people get doing more should they want to, should they want to and so these meal planning guides are a step to make that easier they were more like here's what you can do I'm giving tons of recipes and I'm making it as thorough and concise as I can to make it easy whether you have a lot of cooking skills or not they would be great gifts for somebody who is starting out cooking or wants to cook more, wants to cook healthier, wants to cook using more ingredients. Maybe they have dietary restrictions that have changed the way that they can or should eat. Maybe they just want to eat differently, want to cook at home more. It's all geared towards cooking at home and helping to make that easier and give you more confidence doing that. 
Okay, besides the stuff I spilled here, I'm pretty much done incorporating the butter. I don't feel any more really thick chunks, so I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some flour. Start adding some water. But first I'm just gonna give my veggies a stir. I did add some seasonings to the veggies. I added a little bit of onion powder and garlic powder, even though I have onions and garlic in there. I often like to add the dried version as well, closer to the end of cooking, and salt and pepper. And a little seasoned salt as well. I'm just gonna keep that going. Those are pretty much done. You wanna wait until the veggies are softened, but not. I mean, you could also use leftover vegetables here. Pardon the mess, I have been spilling everywhere. Um, you could use cooked veggies as well. Maybe you've sauteed some, grilled some, um, oven roasted even. The vegetable, like the broccoli, can be just avoid, just omit that for this step. The last thing I'm gonna add is a little bit of rosemary. And I grew this rosemary in our backyard last summer. And I absolutely love adding it to things. Unlike store-bought rosemary, it's soft. I thought that the sort of needliness of the store-bought rosemary was just kind of how rosemary is, but that's not the case. Some of this, I even throw this in soups and stuff and it softens up just like, like a sage leaf would. Get that in there. Oh, that's smelling so good. All right, these veggies are plenty soft, so I'm gonna stop cooking. I'm gonna add just a little water at a time. Until this crust just comes together. This next recipe is broccoli tots. The full recipe is in a link in the description box to the website. These are a run at doing a more nutrient dense tot. I've seen these recipes for all kinds, including these broccoli ones, cauliflower ones, all different kinds of a tot. The basic process is to first steam or boil the broccoli. I prefer to steam it because it retains more nutrients that way. Then in my food processor, I will combine everything to get a good consistency for forming the tots. Then a quick bake. Love this homemade Thousand Island dressing made with yogurt instead of an oil-based dressing for dipping. I left two tots uncoated in breadcrumbs so you can see the difference. And they can be eat, done either way. You can coat them in breadcrumbs before they bake or not. It's totally a personal preference. Feel free to make changes to the recipe and add things that you like. If you give this recipe a try, let me know in the comments how they turned out for you. We are going to try making something totally new. It is going to be a broccoli ice cream somehow. So we've got some frozen bananas in our high speed blender. We've got some dates that I have finely chopped and this is going to add sweetness in addition to the bananas. In addition to, I've got a cup of dark frozen cherries and then a cup of chopped broccoli. So we're going to go ahead and put all this in the high speed blender, add a tablespoon of cocoa powder and a little bit of milk. Just dish this up into the little jar here. And I'm going to put some crushed pistachios on top. So I, take, I tasted it after, and you, if you didn't have shell, that would probably be easier, but I don't have already shelled pistachios, so I'm just gonna take a second to take the shells off. 
I did taste it after I had what I thought was completely mixed all of the ingredients, as I told you, and I felt like the, well, I could taste the broccoli in almost like a kale way. It didn't taste, I didn't taste bad. I didn't, I didn't mind it. Um, the cocoa, sometimes I have a little bit of an issue with cocoa powder, but I went with it. Going forward, I would omit the cocoa powder and I actually ended up adding a half a scoop of chocolate protein powder. So next time, I think what I would do is I would completely omit the cocoa powder and put in maybe a full scoop of the protein powder. And what's great is that you get the cocoa flavor, added protein, and I'm always looking for ways to just get a little bit here and there in what we eat. And I think that other than that, oops, that was backwards. I think other than that, I think it's really good. Does it taste like the kind of ice cream you would get in a store? No. Is it a way to get more vegetables into your diet? Yes. It's kind of fun to do things in a different way sometimes. It challenges your taste buds and, I don't know, just keeps, keeps things interesting and fun. So we're going to put some of these right on top and enjoy this.